What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome and nice to meet you. I'm Matteo Valentino, professional web designer. And today, as you probably saw from the title of the video, we're gonna see how to recreate a super interesting yet extremely easy scroll interaction type of animation directly in After Effects without bothering about anything about coding or implementation code. Uh, today, we're gonna see how to recreate this beautiful award-winning animation. And the good thing about this animation is that whether you are a complete beginner in After Effects, uh, you know nothing about it and you're a that you're scared about the software because it's a monstrosity and I can understand it, or you're more seasoned, you already done some animations in it. This is a perfect animation for everyone because it is super easy, yet super interesting, and it is a really nice way to add some interactivity to your designs. I want to clarify one thing before we start with After Effects, uh, and I read some comments below all the other After Effects tutorials uh, with questions like, what is the purpose of these animations? How do I use them? We spend hours in after Effects, so actually I wanna know where my hours go and if they are any helpful. First of all, I use them to show to the developers that I collaborate with uh, the vision that I have for the project, the flow, all the animations that I have in my mind. And second of all, if I want to try to go viral on social media because I, with my designs, because I want to, uh, I don't know, impress people. I don't know guys, but uh, these are the two main ways that I use those animations. So now that you have everything clarified, and by the way, developers can't implement these animations uh, directly into the websites. This is just a visual way to represent what you have in your mind. So developers can code what you what they see in those animations, but they can't take the videos uh, and put them into the website. Otherwise it's, it's gonna be ugly. And don't hesitate to ask me any question. Just leave in the comments down below and I I'm not gonna answer them. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. So first thing first, we have the design in After Effects. Everything is set up and it is extremely simple. Just follow this video out there or in the other corner where I explain how to transfer your designs from Figma to After Effects. And it is an extremely easy process, just one plugin, super easy, one click. So definitely follow the video if you wanna know how to transfer your designs from one program to the other one. So as you can see, I've already created some sort of animations for the hero section, just to create something more interesting to and pretty to look at. So I don't wanna dive deeper into those animations because this is not the topic of the video, but let me know in the comments down below if you wanna dive deeper into those kind of animations. As you can see here, I've dissected the Pulsar logo and I used the details, just the distinct call to actions in the website. And this is a cool trick that you can apply on every single one of your projects, both personal and clients ones. So just take some details that you might have in some logos, in some brand identity guidelines. Use those details into your website to add details or to create more hierarchy and contrast. Because for example, here, I've used the details to distinct the call to actions in the website. And be careful in the process because you don't want to overdo everything. Uh, the suggestion that I have for you is to use a maximum of one or two elements uh, to add more details uh, or, or create more hierarchy into your design. Uh, otherwise, if you use more, you risk to create something really cluttered. Now I have placed the logo right here because I want to use it as a reference for the end state of my animation. Start animating the arrows, uh, click the arrow, press B on your keyboard to show the position properly on the timeline. Let's click the stopwatch uh, and we have our first keyframe of the entire animation. Now the important thing here is to roughly guess uh, the length uh, of the entire scroll interaction, the scroll animation. Uh, and if it is a little bit confusing, uh, just stick around uh, and I'm gonna explain you everything. Uh, we're gonna see that everything is, it is actually much simpler than it looks. Uh, now that we are at the end of the animation, uh, what we wanna do is we wanna drag the arrow on top of the reference. And as you can see, of course, uh, the scale property is completely different. The scaling of the object is different. Uh, the rotation is different. Uh, and in order to change these two properties, uh, just press Shift S on your keyboard to show the scale property in the timeline. And for the rotation, uh, Shift R and you can see the rotation. What we wanna do is we're gonna wanna go back uh, at the beginning of the animation with the playhead. Uh, just click the stopwatches uh, for the scale and rotation. Uh, and in that way we have created the starting point uh, for these two properties. Now we wanna go again <laughs> at the end of the animation and let's start changing the actual values. So it doesn't need to be pixel perfect because it, again, it is a reference. Plus this is an animation to show the flow 
of the website so we don't want to lose waste time on creating everything pixel perfect i'm pretty happy with that and if we move the playhead we have something guys and now the same thing we need to apply the same process for the other arrows so select the other arrow press p on your keyboard to show the position property on the timeline shift s for the scale and shift r for the rotation now it is important to keep the exact same timing as the previous animation so we move the playhead at nine seconds and create some keyframes which are are gonna be again the endpoint for this animation and let's move the playhead at three seconds and create some keyframes here as well just to create the starting point for this animation like the previous one at the beginning of this animation we don't want to change any value of any property so let's move the playhead at the end and let's drag the arrow down below on top of the other reference now we are lucky that the orientation is the same as our reference, so let's just scale it up a little bit and move it again on top of the reference just to make it fit on the reference. I think that I scale it up too much, so let's scale it down a little bit and move it on top of the reference. Something around that, I'm, I'm happy with the result. And if you see uh, sometimes that the entire scene get peaks later, it's because After Effects need to render, uh, even though if you change uh, small simple elements um, after effects uh, takes a while to render those things even though i have a pretty powerful machine uh, i think that it is what it is um, and we need to stick with that <laughs> if we move the playhead we can see that we're getting closer to the final result uh, and but the only thing that i don't like uh, is that the arrow on the right side uh, is has the same rotation value throughout the entire animation so i want to change this uh, just a tiny bit to make everything more interesting and dynamic. So I move the playhead at the end of the animation and I wanna do something like, uh, now we have the value to minus uh, 180 degrees uh, and I wanna do something like plus 180 degrees. And by the way, these are not values that you can duplicate on every project that you have. Uh, you need to, for each scenario, you need to try and see what works for the exact element that you have. Now let's quickly check the animation again. The only thing that at the moment I don't like is the easing of the animation. So to change that, just select all the keyframes in the timeline, go on right click, keyframe assistant, and we go with easy ease. And this creates a default easing curve for the animation. If you want to change the speed of it, just go on the graph editor, drag the points. These are the keyframes and the starting point. And we do something like that i'm pretty happy with that and you can see that at the moment uh, everything is more interesting so it speeds up and then it slows down again at this point uh, this is one of the most interesting steps uh, in these tutorials because this is the point where we need to simulate the wheel of the mouse uh, and it's way easier than it sounds uh, just create a new composition in the project uh, and i usually use 1920 by 1080 to simulate the screen the size of my computer. Click OK, and now what we wanna do is we wanna drag in the composition that we worked on until now and change the position just to have the hero section in the first place, just on the screen. If you pay attention, you already saw kind of a scroll wheel interaction type of animation because if you change the vertical position of the entire scene, we can see that we are simulating kind of a scroll interaction, if you will. So simulating the scroll event in a web setter is just basically changing the vertical position of our composition. It's nothing more than that. Synchronize the easing that we have for the animation for the scroll interaction, this is a crucial step. We want to have the same easing curves both for the interaction and for the animation. Be careful about that because otherwise uh, everything is going to be messed up. One plugin that really comes in handy in this, in this type of situation uh, is Motion for After Effects and I'm going to leave you the link in the description down below if you want to download it. At this point in the panel, uh, just uh, choose the values for the acceleration and deacceleration uh, of the animation. Select all the keyframes that you want and select this button, click this button to apply the value for the easing curve. Same thing for the end of the animation and same thing for the position of the scroll interaction. And this is really crucial, guys, because at the moment, everything is synchronized for you. Let's play the entire thing. And as you can see, guys, we are super close to the final result. The only thing is that it's a little bit unrealistic because of the fact that it is too slow and it is one single scroll. So it is too long, too big. So we need to add some steps in between of the end and starting point of this animation. The concept behind it is basically to decide the full length of the scroll interaction and then add some steps in between to just simulate multiple scroll interactions. 
interactions uh, on our real website. So we're gonna add one step uh, and then the process is the same over and over, just repeat it. I wanna add one more step uh, in between the animation. So I wanna move the playhead uh, like four and a half seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and just uh, click the small diamonds uh, on the be beside the properties. Uh, and in that way, we are creating the endpoint uh, for the first uh, scroll interaction. At this point, uh, we need to decide the starting point of the second scroll interaction. Uh, and this is a crucial step uh, you don't have to click the small diamonds that we have beside the properties, but we want to duplicate the ones that we've just created. So in that way, between four and a half seconds and five and a half seconds in this time span, we don't change any value of any property. So let's continue duplicating the keyframes. Now to make it easier to understand, we need to treat those two animations into blocks. We have created one block for the first scroll interaction and another block for the second scroll interaction. And so at this point, everything for the easing is much easier because this is the starting point, this is the end point of this block. So we need to start to apply the easing curve here, starting point, here, end point, and we need to apply the easing accordingly. Same thing for the second block, we apply the easing curve for the starting point and the easing curve for the end point. Let's play the animation, first scroll interaction, second scroll and second phase of the scroll. Of course, uh, this is a little bit too slow. So instead of using nine seconds, we maybe want to go to seven seconds uh, and make it a little bit faster. So if we play it again, we can see that the first scroll interaction uh, and then we have the second one. So this feels a little bit more realistic. This final step for the animation is to just duplicate this structure in the main composition. So we need to add these two in between steps at four and a half and five and a half seconds. So let's go and add these two keyframes here and at five and a half seconds. Again, let's treat the animation in blocks. So this is the first scroll interaction. This is the second one. Let's apply the uh, easing curve accordingly, depending on the keyframes that we are selecting. So we have everything in place. Everything is done. We have our fantastic scroll interaction. And by the way, if this is the first time that you do those kind of animations in After Effects and you find the entire process really complicated and confusing, don't worry, it's completely normal. You're gonna get better as you create more and more of these animations in After Effects. This is my process. Uh, probably it's not the best one uh, to create those kind of animations, uh, but it is for sure the best one for me. So hopefully you find it helpful. So that is basically it, guys. Uh, and as you can see, those animations are really easy to recreate uh, and 90% of them uh, are just uh, transforms, uh, simple properties, uh, nothing crazy. But all those kind of animations, uh, scroll interactions, uh, all those kind of things uh, add a lot of interactivity to your website. So I actually recommend you to think more about them. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I can see that most of you that are watching these videos are not subscribed yet, so definitely hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna know and if you wanna dive deeper into certain topics like After Effects, uh, website animation, scroll interactions, uh, I don't know, tips and tricks about anything about the design. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.